Good morning. Welcome to the Morning Touch. I'm Darwin Campbell. You know, the Morning Touch is brought to you by the FSBC in Glendale for your encouragement. And as we start this week, we want you to be encouraged. I want to focus on the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 today and then offer three questions at the end of our discussion to help you start your week. The Apostle Paul was one who was not fully trusted, but yet when he obeyed the gospel on the road to the Damascus in the book of Acts, a lot of people were skeptical of his faith and skeptical of his life change. But what we learn is that Paul preached the gospel, made three missionary journeys. He had his ups, he had his downs. The Bible talks about in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, as he catalogs his challenges throughout his ministry, he went through imprisonments, he was beaten, he was shipwrecked, he was bitten by a, a snake, he was uh, left for dead, and he was rejected by those around him. He was stoned. Paul went through a lot. And to add more to it, when we look at Paul's description in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, we see that he had what we'd like to term today, he had a thorn in the flesh. He had something that he just couldn't get rid of. And the Bible talks about it being a reminder to him. He prayed to the Lord. Listen to, listen to Paul's words in chapter 12 and verse 7. Therefore, so that I could not exalt myself, a thorn in the flesh was given unto me so that I would not exalt myself. Concerning this, I pled to the Lord three times to take it away from me. But God said, my grace is sufficient to thee. For power is perfected in weakness. Therefore, I will most gladly boast all the more about my weakness so that Christ's power may reside in me. So I take pleasure, Paul says, in weakness in insults, in catastrophes, in persecutions, in pressures, because of Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Paul is telling us that no matter what you go through in Christ Jesus, there are tough things. There are hard times. We are in a hard time right now with the pandemic. Some of us haven't gone back to work. Some of us are struggling to pay the bills. Some of us are having marital stress. Some of us are having financial trouble. We're like Paul. We have faith. But Paul says, even though you pray and you may ask for whatever it is to be removed, and it's still there, he said, let that remain Something to remind you of your dependence on God. Something to keep you from getting puffed up with pride. Something to help you understand that you need God. You know, there are a lot of people running around here right now on this earth thinking there's no God. Thinking, I don't need God. But then when hard times hit and they have no answers. When the economy crashes and they have nowhere to go. The first thing they do is look up and say, God help me. Paul says we can save ourselves a lot of trouble if we just remain steady throughout our trials. If we remain faithful throughout persecution. If we stay on track in spite of all of the challenges that we face. It may be a medical challenge. It may be a financial challenge. It may be a challenge with another person. But through it all, we pray about it and we lean on the Lord and he will help us get through it. There's a saying going around, we'll get through this together. Well, you know, with God, he's always with you. And with him, we'll get through it together. Paul says, let us be reminded, my grace is sufficient for you. For the power is perfected in weakness. Paul says, I become stronger in weakness. 
because in my weakness, with all the things in life that I have no answers to, with the problems that I cannot solve, I lean closer to God. I lean closer to God in dependence, in love, in trust, in faith. In other words, my challenges and my persecution make me stronger. It may not kill me, but it'll make me stronger. Paul is saying persecution makes you stronger. Hard times makes you stronger. Difficulties makes you stronger. And that may not seem sensible to the world, but understand Paul is telling you and me that the more challenges that we have and the difficulties that we face, we get through it because we lean and we depend and we trust on our God because we know that he will carry us through. Grace is sufficient. The question I want to ask as we close. Paul has paved the way for you and I to understand that in our weaknesses and in our troubles and in our pains and in our difficult times that we're going through right now. We are strong. Because it should drive us back to the cross. It should drive us on down to our knees. On our knees. It should drive us to prayer. It should drive us closer to God. It should make us depend on him. And cause us to call on him. We are strong. Even though it appears and feels that we are physically weak. We are strong because we go back to God. And we trust in him. And we hold on his hand. Knowing that he has the answers for us. So as we close today, is his grace sufficient for you today? Are you patient enough to wait on the Lord in spite of persecution, pain, troubles, worries, anxiety, dependence, addiction? Are you willing to cut down on your knees and ask the Lord to help you through? In your weakness, you can be strong if you just trust in the Lord and you depend on him and you lean on him. It is from him that all blessings flow. Do you trust him with your life? Are you willing to trust him with your all in all? Many of us are on edge. Many of us feel like we're at the end of our ropes. Many of us feel like we just can't handle it. That's the time. Get on your knees. That's the time. Lean on the cross. That's the time to talk to God. When you've done everything you can do, that's when God will step in and do what you can't do. Let me say that and then I'll close. When you've done everything you can do, like right about now, that's when God will step in and do what you can't do. My grace is sufficient for you. Even though we're weak, we're strong. When we trust in God and we lean on him. God bless you and keep you. The Morning Touch is brought to you by the FSBC in Glendale. We hope you've been encouraged. And we will see you again next time for another message from God's own word. God bless you.